everybody welcome back to another episode of colton posey fishing so today we're going to be talking about little bait modifications that you can do that'll help uh especially during those times where the fish are acting kind of finicky y'all know what i'm talking about like right now you know the weather's heated up and then it cools back down heats up cools back down the fish are just kind of funky and stuff these little tips and tricks like this um they're super simple, super easy. You can do it whether you're in the boat on a whim or you can do it at the house by prepping. Don't forget guys, also, uh, we got members only now. Um, if you wanna get these videos early, make sure to join that. It's $2 a month, helps me out a whole lot. Helps me with my equipment and all different kinds of stuff, gas, all that good stuff. So I appreciate it if uh, you can you know, uh, afford to do that. If you can't, it's cool either way. I appreciate you stopping by. Don't forget to like and subscribe also. It helps me out a whole lot. So stay tuned, this is something you don't wanna miss. All right, everybody, so let's talk about bait modifications. First off, we're gonna start with one that, I mean, it works year round, whether it's winter, spring, summer, fall, it doesn't matter. Uh, this bait is one of my favorites because I love moving baits. I don't like to sit around and think about what I'm gonna do next, I prefer to move. <laughs> so, uh, spinner bait. Okay, uh, and as you can see, this spinner bait's a lot different, okay? So it's not the typical spot sticker, it's not the typical Booyah or War Eagle or anything like that. To be honest with you, I'm not 100% sure what this brand is. This is a custom bait that was made um, by a specific individual, but there's nothing a whole lot special about it. Um, it's a 3 8 ounce uh, spinner bait, but it's got just one single Colorado blade and it is silver. Um, swap it out between gold and silver, but uh, when the water's muddy, I'm gonna use gold. When the water's not muddy, I'm gonna use the silver, okay, for the flash. Now, the key to this bait is, as you can see, the skirt's gone, okay? So I've got, the, let me just take it off here, so show y'all a little better. So as you can see, the skirt's gone, right? All right, there's a reason for that. This time of year, when the fish are real, real finicky, and they're moving up, moving back down, moving up, moving back down because of the weather change, okay? Sometimes a lot of action is bad, okay? Now, I know that's hard to hear, uh, especially from a power fisherman, because sometimes it throws me in a funk, and I'm like, okay, it's just got too much action, I need to do something. So that's one of those instances where I actually, I'm running just a single Colorado blade for the vibration that's, that's gonna put in the water and then I'm taking the skirt off, okay? So it doesn't have a whole, whole lot more action. Although, I'm not gonna throw it with just the bare hook here, okay? So I, I'm not gonna throw it just like this. Typically what I do is I like to put a swim bait, uh, like the Rage Swimmer, Kitek, whatever you can get or whatever you use, it doesn't really matter that much on this bait, but uh, usually a 3.75 inch. Put that on there, or either a 2.75 inch, whatever, uh, it depends on your hook size, okay? I'm not sure the hook size on this one, it looks somewhere around a three all, but the 3.75 inch works great on this one. So, you can put your swim bait on this, no skirt, and then you're just gonna slow roll it. Now, <clears throat> when that water gets super muddy and you're throwing it, close to uh you know when the water's super muddy you want to throw it close to the cover and stuff that's going to be around you in that area because a lot of times these fish will huddle up close to the cover because it's just like you being in a dark room okay you're not just going to stand out in the middle of the floor and hope for the best right you're going to find something to get up against that way you can hopefully feel your way around or do whatever you need to do to get out of that dark room it's pretty it's pretty similar to that with the bass um, when the water gets super muddy. Now, I'm not talking about just a little bit of stain, like the water is usually green and now it's just got a little bit of funk color to it. I'm talking muddy, 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 muddy water. I'm talking not even an inch of visibility, muddy water. Uh, with the silver blade on it, when the water's clear, but the water needs to be cold. So 45, 50 degrees uh, water temps, I'm gonna be throwing it with the silver blade, but the water needs to be cold. Same thing, I'm putting uh, something like a Rage Swimmer or something like that on there to <clears throat> help entice those fish to bite. Hopefully mimic a couple of shad running through the water, okay? So, <clears throat> when the fish are in a funk, try that. Get you a spinnerbait. Like I said, it ain't gotta be no super expensive spinnerbait. Grab you a war eagle, a booyah, a custom bait, whatever, 
whatever you can. Uh, get you the single blade, not the dual blade. I'm all tangled up. It don't matter. Uh, just the single blade, though. Toss this in clear water up close to cover and around the areas that you think fish are on the flats, on the deep points and stuff like that. You can even jig this bait. Okay, so that's a little simple technique that a lot of people didn't utilize with a spinnerbait. You can throw the spinnerbait out there with that rage swimmer on there, let that sucker hit bottom. Now, typically, if I do that, I want to go up to like a half ounce or a three-quarter ounce the way it gets to the bottom a little bit quicker. Because you got to think, if you put a swim bait on the back of this, you're going to have some kind of resistance, okay? So with that resistance, it's going to take it a little while longer to hit bottom. Sometimes that's good, sometimes that's bad. You just kind of have to play around with it. It depends on the day, okay, and what's going on that day. So... Either way, jigging a spinner bait, you're going to take this bait and you're going to throw it out there, let it fall and hit bottom. Once it hits bottom, you're going to slowly pick it up, okay? Just like you're kind of like you're worm fishing. You want to make sure that blade's turning. You'll feel the resistance whether or not the blade's turning. And then you're going to copy that over and over again, especially if you're fishing some type of flat off a point or something like that. But either way, that's a really simple technique to catch fish when they're in a funk. Jerk it scared off and, you know, throw your swim bait on there and stuff. Gold blade when it's muddy, silver blade when it's not muddy. All right, so the next technique I want to talk about, this one's one that uh, I've used for several years. I've caught fish uh, uh, in the spring, summer, fall. I've caught them in the winter on top water. But all of this depends on the conditions, okay? So, you know, if it is during winter and I catch some spotted bass on top water, they're typically not going to eat it as fast as they would during the spring, during the summer, during the fall, just because of the water temps. As we talked about in my earlier videos about the fish's metabolism and what they do uh, with their metabolism. But one of the key things that you can do to catch more fish on the top water, and it's helped me tremendously, and you can see this bait right here. Well, I'll say you can see it. Uh, well, I don't know if you can see it or not. Uh, it's hard to see with the camera lens because it's clear, but this bait looks like it's been drugged behind a truck. I've caught so many fish off this top water walking bait. This is the Strike King Sexy Dog Junior, but this is the nude version, so it's completely clear. Okay, but one of the key features that I do to all my top water baits is I put a feather hook on the back. Okay, the reason I put the feather hook on the back is because typically we're fishing thread fin shad or uh, some type of shad pattern with the top water baits. And a lot of times these fish, they will short strike this. They will come up and they'll either miss it completely or either they'll come up and just pop it, okay? And they're not getting a full bite. What the feather hook does is give them some type of contrast in the water for them to target the bait, okay? So if they can target the bait, which is the feather hook, they get a full bite, okay? So typically if they come up from the back and they grab that feather hook and they hook, they're gonna grab and they're gonna roll. When they roll, a lot of times they get the front hook too. So, you know, they're hung up real good. But that's a little key feature that you can do that'll help you out a whole lot with top water baits. Make sure you take and put your treble hook with a feather hook on the back of your top water baits. Now, another key little thing you can do with the VMC bladed hooks, I forgot what they're called. I had some. I've run out. I don't know. I guess I've run out. I can't find them. But either way, I need to get me some more. Another little thing you can do. Like, oh, um, let me put this back. I'll show you. A few moments later. Like your uh, prop baits, okay? Like the head and torpedo and stuff. Now, here's the thing about the head. The hooks are put on this bait. You can't get the hooks off unless you cut them. There's other prop baits out there that you can use. Um, that's similar that you can take the hooks off. One of the things I would say to do is get you a prop bait that you can take the hooks off of. And one of the things that I do, I broke mine off or something, I don't know, or it's tied on one of my old rods. But either way, you can take that front hook off, get the BMC hook with the little blade on it, put it on the front, and it helps also give them something to target. They're going to target that hook. That's the main thing. A lot of people don't think, oh, I want them to hit my bait. Not necessarily. I want them to hit my hook, okay? If they get the hook, then I got them. You get what I'm saying? So give that a shot with your top water baits. You'll catch a lot more fish. All right, now, another little thing you can do, and this applies to especially the pre-spawn, the spawn, and the post-spawn, okay? Floating worms, okay? So your trick worms, right? I always hear people talk about your floating worms uh, during the spring. It's typically when they'll be used. Now, most people 
they're gonna run a standard Texas rig on this trick worm, okay? Completely fine, it works. Although, a little trick that you can do, get you like an octopus hook or some type of drop shot hook, something like that, you can nose hook this bait, okay? And it's gonna give it that same action, okay? The only downside is, or I say it's gonna give it the same action, it's gonna give it a little bit more action. The only downside is, is you can miss a lot of fish because you've only got the nose of this bait hooked, okay? So you're gonna have to slow this process down a little bit to make sure your hookup ratio is good. It's kind of like when a frog, uh, when you're fishing with a frog and the bass comes up, eats the frog and pulls it underwater, it's kind of the same concept. You want to let them come up and eat it, but you want to give it just a second before you set the hook, okay? So, same way, nose hook those trick worms and give that a shot. Another thing you can do, which is super nice that I love to do, hook it right through the middle, and you can kind of wacky rig it. But now, I don't hook it right in the center. I kind of want it right above the center, okay? So, it's going to give it... It's kind of going to give it that wacky style, but a little bit different action. It's something that they don't see a whole lot. And sometimes those real, real finicky fish, this helps out a whole lot. But typically, I'm running this weightless. Now, if the fish are not coming up and eating it, I'll put a super small bullet weight above this. Super, super small. And then I'll peg it, okay? That way it stays close to the hook. That'll help it get to the bottom and you can fish it a little bit quicker. Helps a whole lot. Um... <clears throat> Now with the fluke, this is a technique that um, really I just thought up one day. I don't know if anybody else does it. If you do, let me know down in the comments below. But um, I was having issues during the spring after a bunch of people started fishing with flukes. The fish kind of become accustomed to seeing the fluke. So they were still coming up after it, but they were short striking it. And I couldn't really figure out what I needed to do. Here's a little trick that you can do when you're rigging up these flukes. That helps tremendously. So these are the gamakatsu like little leader hooks or something like that. Uh, it's like it's a trailer hook basically. It's a treble hook. What you're gonna do is you're gonna Texas rig your fluke. Okay. So what I want you to do, I just want you to imagine you Texas. Here, we'll just use this worm. All right. So go back to being a child in kindergarten. We're gonna fake and pretend that this is a fluke. All right, so we're gonna Texas rig this fluke, just like this, right? So we got this bait coming up. Now, before you put the hook in the worm, you're gonna take this hook and you're gonna put it up here. I typically slide it all the way up to the bend in the hook, just like this, okay? Now, once I do that, I'm gonna standard Texas rig my fluke, just like that. Now, what that's going to do, I'm going to bring the back and just barely hook it into the skin, just like that. So that treble hook and your regular hook is going to sit together on that fluke. It's still going to have that tail action on your uh, super fluke, whatever kind of fluke you use, but your hookup ratio is going to be a lot better. Now, if they're not even getting this and they're striking way behind it, you can take that same hook, slide it all the way back, just like this. You may have to trim a little bit of your fluke off so your fluke's not hitting the uh, hook. But you can take, and while you're running this, once you let that sit still, that hook's going to sit like this. Those fish that come up and short strike or shoot below it or whatever, they're going to catch that treble hook, and your hookup ratio will go up a ton. I've done this with so many people in the boat, and they're just like, man, that's insane. It helps a whole, whole lot, especially on those days where the fish are kind of short striking. Now, before we go in, well, that, that's pretty much all the bait modifications, but, but I do want to bring one thing to light. On those super muddy uh, days when you're fishing with this particular spinner bait, okay, don't forget and don't be afraid to put on a trailer hook. So, if you don't have a swim bait or something like that, you can run this bait the exact same way. Muddy water, clear water, it doesn't matter. And just put your trailer hook on there, okay? That trailer hook will catch you a lot more fish, especially in muddy water, than you would ever believe uh, any bait would, okay? Because a lot of times these fish, they're not really seeing your bait. They're kind of feeling it, they're moving towards it, and once they catch a glimpse of it, they'll strike at it, but... You know, if you ain't got live sonar or something like that, you're not going to be able to see 
those fish um, swipe at it. So you're not really going to know. That's the reason a lot of times when you're in that muddy water, make sure you're making several casts to one spot, especially if you have that intuition like, hey, I think a fish is right there. Cast to that spot several times before you move on, okay? I'm a fire fisherman. I like to hit something one time and go. But either way, um, guys, I hope you liked the video. If you do, make sure to like and subscribe for more content. But also, we've got a lot more content coming out here soon. Um, some of this content um, is going to be a little bit different. But one of the other ones, uh, and it's a question I've been getting a whole lot, is what exactly is power fishing and how do you do it? And I'm going to do an on-the-water breakdown of that. Uh, it's just going to take a little bit of time. Just got the boat back. Just got it fixed and stuff. Uh, so either way, uh, be patient with me. We'll get that out. In the meantime, I'm going to bring um, some questions and stuff like that that I've been getting here recently uh, into the video. So that way, anybody who may have that same question, you know, it'll be covered. But either way, guys, I really appreciate you all, and I'll see you next time.